Welcome to What Gear Reviews, tech reviews coming to you from rainy old England. Today, I'm looking at the Sonos Arc. This is the successor to the Sonos Play Bar that reigned at the top of Sonos's TV sound solutions for eight years. And I heard that was in fact the best selling sound bar ever. And I also heard that the Sonos Arc is even better. And I've been using 5.1 surround systems for about 15 years. And what I'm wondering is, is the Sonos Arc good enough to replace my 5.1? Will it match up to what I'm currently using? And I will be addressing this in the sound quality section of this video. So make sure you stick around towards the end for that. So before we begin looking at the design and all this kind of stuff, I want to debunk one of the myths surrounding the Sonos Arc. So the Arc is Sonos's first soundbar with Dolby Atmos. And there's a lot of people out there who think that you absolutely must have an enhanced ARC port on your TV to get Dolby Atmos. That is not entirely true. If you have a TV that supports Dolby Digital Plus, your TV can support Dolby Atmos as well, albeit a slightly more compressed version of it, you can still get Dolby Atmos and it still will sound awesome, trust me. So long story short, the Sonos Arc is designed for the future, not so much for the past. And if you're wondering whether this will work with the old, old generation Sonos speakers, in some cases it won't. And that is evolution. Things move forward, they evolve, they get better. So things you bought 10 years ago, unfortunately, might not work for the Sonos Arc. So now let's get a proper look at this design. The Sonos Arc has 11 digital amplifiers. We've got eight woofers and three silk dome tweeters. And the positioning and angling of these are key to the Arc's output performance, especially when it comes to emulating a full surround sound system. Sonos have placed two speakers at either side and two upwards firing speakers, which are the Dolby Atmos drivers. And then you've got four speakers aimed straight at you. The body of the Arc is quite wide at 114 centimeters, which makes this a really great match for any TV that's around 49 inches or larger. Right here, I have a 55 inch TV and I think it's the perfect match for this. And I really like the design language that Sonos have gone with on board the Arc. The rounded surface doesn't reflect any harsh light and it allows it to blend into its environment. And the fact that it doesn't give off any reflections means it won't distract you when you're watching movies or TV. And the Arc can be wall mounted and that might be something that I have to do here because this TV, the Sony AF8, doesn't actually rise up from its stand. The only other option is to put that on the wall and have the Arc underneath. If you do want to put it on the wall, you will need a proprietary bracket from Sonos and it will remain in the same orientation it would be in if it was on a surface. And one of the great things about doing this is when you do it, it will know it's on the wall and it will calibrate its sound specifically for that kind of positioning. Now, if we look at the back of the Arc, Sonos have kept it really simple. There's your power input, an ethernet input to connect it to your network. If you wanna do that via a wire, you can of course do this wirelessly if you want to. There's the all important HDMI EARC input and a pairing button. And although the Sonos Arc is designed for the future, Sonos have thrown in an optical to HDMI converter if you have a TV that doesn't have an ARC port. And if you do opt to use the optical, you will lose the option to have Dolby Atmos. And for those of you who still like to use your hands to control things. You have to use your hands? That's like a baby's toy. Let's talk about the physical controls. So there are some very discreet controls on board. You've got the usual play, pause, and volume up and down controls. And there's one really important button here, which I'm gonna come back to in a moment. So for those of you who are more into virtual assistants and home automation, you're gonna love this. The Arc has four far field beam forming microphones on board, and you can use these mics to control the Arc, as well as your smart home gadgets. So essentially, if you're feeling so lazy, you can't even lift a finger, you can just use your voice to control your home using the Sonos Arc. Now that important button that I mentioned earlier, I'm very sure you don't want microphones in your house that are always connected to some kind of monitoring station that you can't 
mute. I really appreciate this feature here on the Sonos Arc. Clicking this button here will mute the microphones on board. It's an important feature for your privacy. Now, before we talk about how the Sonos Arc compares to a 5.1 surround sound system, we need to talk about the area where Sonos really dominate, and that is the software side of things. So using the Sonos app, you can, of course, group the Sonos Arc with other speakers in your house. You can even set up a full 5.1 surround sound system with the Arc at the forefront, which is definitely something I would like to do. And the way this would work is you'd have the Arc as your left and right channels, as well as your center channel. You'd have the upward firing speakers as well for Dolby Atmos, but you'd also have two rear speakers and a subwoofer, essentially turning this into a very powerful 5.1 home cinema setup. And the great thing about it is it's modular. You can do this bit by bit if you wanted to. And check this out, this is awesome. This is a speaker that I really love. I did review it already. This is the Sonos Roam. One of the great things you can do with this, with the Arc, is literally I can walk into this room, push a button on here, grab the audio that's playing on the Arc, take it into another room with me. And then I could even throw it from this to another Sonos speaker. Or I could even walk out of the house with the Roam connected to my phone and it would essentially carry on playing from my phone the same music that was playing here in the Arc when I left the house. How awesome is that? And if you guys want to learn a bit more about the Sonos Roam, I'll link my review to it at the end of this video. Now, one of the things that makes Sonos speakers so special is the sound calibration software within the Sonos app. So using an iOS device and only an iOS device at this point, you can use this TruePlay software. The Arc will reflect sounds off the walls in the room that it's in to figure out its position in that room. And then using the Intel it gathers from its beamforming microphones, it will calibrate the audio output sound signature specifically for the type of room that you have. So now it's time to talk about the sound quality from the Sonos Arc and how it compares to a 5.1 surround sound system. Anyway, let's fast forward a little bit. Okay, so it's quite late at night now. I've been listening to this for about four or five hours. I've been playing games, watching TV, and watching a few movies on this thing, testing out a few things, and I've really put it through its paces. And one of the things I noticed straight away in comparison to my 5.1 surround setup is the difference in the vocal range. The clarity is so good. All of the high ends and the mids are very crisp, very clear, but they're not too ear piercing. And that's something that's quite hard to achieve, but Sonos have really nailed it here. Another really pleasant surprise when it comes to the Arc is the amount of bass that this can deliver from just the soundbar on its own. It really is impressive. When you're watching movies and there's explosions and stuff like that, so I think that really surprised me is you get that kind of deep bass and you can feel it in your chest and you can feel it vibrating through the floor, but you don't lose that vocal range. So they've got this perfect balance where the bass is well-rounded, but it doesn't detract from the high ends or the mids. And that again is something that's really hard to achieve. And they've done it again here with this soundbar. I'm very impressed with the bass and the clarity. And this is such a big deal for me because all of my 5.1 systems that I've used in the past, Typically when I'm watching movies and there's explosion and there's really bassy tones going on, I have to reach for the remote to turn the sound down so I don't annoy my neighbors. And then when someone starts speaking, I find myself reaching for the remote again to turn it back up so I can hear what they're saying. I don't have that problem here on the Sonos Arc. And that's a really fantastic thing. Now, when it comes to separation of audio, when it comes to sound bars, again, this is another hard thing to achieve because the sound bar is all in one piece, but you really get that sound separation here. And that's probably thanks to the two outward drivers. And if you're listening for those, you can really hear them. You can hear when they're kicking in, but if you close your eyes and just listen to the audio, it does feel, it really does feel like the audio is coming from the sides and around you when Atmos kicks in. Now let's talk about Atmos. So I've got a Sony AF8 here. This was released in 2018. And like I said at the beginning of the video, it doesn't have an EARC port, but it is capable of Atmos. There's one problem that I ran into is the kind of handshake between the TV and the streaming service like Disney Plus or Netflix or Prime. It doesn't actually recognize it as a Dolby Atmos device, which is a problem. But here's the proof that it does actually support Dolby Atmos. I downloaded Tidal from the Play Store 
to the TV. Logged in with my Tidal account and immediately Tidal presented this message to me. Then when I played Dolby Atmos audio through the TV down the ARC port back to the ARC, it was indeed playing back Dolby Atmos. What I consider to be probably the best 5.1 surround soundbar that I've ever heard now went up another notch because that Atmos works so well. So I was playing the Star Wars theme tune, the proper one, the classical one, through Tidal in Dolby Atmos. And let me tell you something, when that starts, the sound isn't just left and right, it is coming from all around you and you can really feel it. If you close your eyes, it's literally better than most cinema experiences that I've had in the last few years. So while I was testing out the Dolby Atmos here on Tidal, of course I wanted to get movies working on it. So I started searching for solutions on how I could actually get my TV to output Dolby Atmos from the streaming services. And really, unless Sony fixed that issue, we're probably not gonna see that on this particular TV. But here's the workaround, and this will work, is you can get an Nvidia Shield, which will cost you about 100 pounds, and that can actually output Dolby Atmos through your TV back down the arc so you'll get Dolby Atmos that way. A cheaper option is to go with the Amazon Fire Stick. You have to get the 4K one though. That will cost you about 50 quid and that will also support Dolby Atmos. So what will happen is, this different from what your TV will do if you have an older TV, is it will recognize the Fire Stick as an Atmos device and then that Atmos signal will travel through your TV back down to the arc via your ARC port in your TV. So that's the workaround if you're worried about that. And it's definitely cheaper than going out and buying yourself a new TV. So that's probably the option I'm gonna do. I just have to decide whether to do the Amazon Fire Stick or the Google Chromecast or the Nvidia. I'm not sure yet. And there's probably some others you could do as well. And another problem that some of you guys are gonna have when it comes to Dolby Atmos is the lack of content right now. And like I said at the beginning of the video, this is a future-proof product. Dolby Atmos is gonna be more prevalent in future films and releases. They can remaster old stuff and try and add it in there, but it's never gonna be the same as a film that's been filmed and recorded with that format in mind. So if you're wondering whether the Sonos Arc has won me over from 5.1 systems, they're in the same sort of price category. Well, I have to say it has. Really, I'm super impressed with this soundbar. It's way better than my 5.1. The only areas where the 5.1 maybe wins out a little bit is with the rear channels. But of course, those have wires running to them and that's super annoying and can be quite messy in your living room as well. And I know there's a ton more stuff we could talk about when it comes to this soundbar. I don't have time to throw it all in this video. If you've got any questions, make sure you leave them down below. If you enjoyed this one, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you just subscribed, you're now one of the finest subscribers known to man. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Don't be late.